trudging through forests in the dead of the night. There's no wild boss here or anything, right? Getting abandoned by my crew. You guys are leaving as well? Guys! Oh my goodness! Oh my god! And chilling with the creepiest doll ever. I will pick out the blind. This is why I don't watch horror films. Oh my god. I can't look at it. How did I get here? Please come in right now. Okay, okay, uh, we are coming in. What the f aren't they listening to me? Guys! It's all because I signed up to be a ghost hunter. I still don't know what it is, but it, it really shook me. I'm Roz, and I love experiencing all things unusual <gasps> and unexpected. You did it? <laughs> you did it. <laughs> so I am on the hunt for some of the weirdest. Oh my god. Can I get out of here? Wildest and wackiest hobbies in Singapore. This means spending time with people I never knew existed. Oh, intense, man. And exploring sides of Singapore I never thought I would. Wow, this is really nice. All to learn how to be a fringe fan. We are going through some of our old footage. These guys are ghost hunting hobbyists. You can hear there's another girl giggling at the back. That sound? Because it's your face, I respect that. Okay. okay. That, that sound? That sound. They call themselves the X Trackers and have been active since 2006. That makes them one of the oldest ghosting groups in Singapore. Is that you getting possessed? Yeah, my energy is draining because they really suck up my energy that much. Uh. Were you guys like freaked out by whatever happened like in this video? Uh, no, because I think we are used to it. Okay. This is like your how many is uh, <laughs> possession? It's uh, for possession, is is there's a few hundreds, uh, I think we, we did. These guys do this every other weekend. They start by finding a haunting hotspot. And once the sun goes down and the spooks come out... We're in the northern part of Singapore. They go around looking for anything unusual. Sometimes they'll taunt the spirits and stream it all live on the internet. Yeah, more to live streams, so there's no editing. You can see there's no reenactment. Back to the other group, are you suggesting that they're just acting? Some might might be so-called acting because they just want uh, the live view. Mm. I can't believe I'm hoping to join this group of ghost hunting hobbyists. So what are the entry requirements to join the X-Trackers? So the first one is actually the courage test where you have to be isolated alone in total darkness and we will do different kind of uh, taboos. Wait, what? Okay, so the guys tell me, according to superstition, there are some taboos you play in order to attract spirits, like... See with uh, a trigger object, like a uh, hunted doors or anything haunting, uh, while facing a mirror. This is definitely not for me. <laughs> Hitting chopsticks on a ball. You are inviting them for meal time or mm. something like that. Or ringing a bell at night. Whoa! <laughs> Like any good exclusive club, these guys have an initiation rite known as Uji Nyali, or Courage Test, which means performing one of these taboos without chickening out. Yay me! So if you can't do all this, then I can't join your group lah. For you to join us, you have to try the experiment with us. Actually, we are hoping that she gets to see you the doll. The doll? The doll? Yeah. No! <laughs> yes. It's so horrible. Uh, okay, I'll pick this one. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is Chris. He is the resident ghost magnet. Let's just say he has a knack for getting possessed. And I get to spend some time with him in the dark, alone. I'll take anything but sitting alone in the dark <laughs> with right, a doll. Right. Okay, there's nothing less I want to, than to do that. 
Singaporeans are a superstitious bunch. More than two-thirds believe in ghosts. And of those who do, more than a third are convinced they've encountered the supernatural. That might explain the popularity of ghost hunters here. I'm not sure what I believe, but tonight, during my Uginelli, maybe I'll find out. I will have to trust the crew, okay? Because I'm actually putting my well-being in their hands. I like to go into things with an open mind. I think the only thing I'll fear is mosquitoes. So I'm here in the middle of nowhere. Honestly, I'm a bit of a skeptic, but I've also got like this, this bracelet here that's blessed by the monk. So hopefully this will give me enough good energy. Right now I'm still okay, but who knows what might happen later. <laughs> Today we have a special guest. Welcome Ross. <laughs> You're gonna sit down. Just two of you, you'll be far away, but don't worry, we will be monitoring a live stream. So how will I know when Chris is about to get possessed? You will see some strange reaction within him. And yeah. then how fast from then <laughs> to you guys coming to me? It will be very fast, don't how worry. How fast? It will take a while, but you will come. What do you mean a while? <laughs> okay guys, let's go. Alright. All right. You know, there's a backstory about this place. Okay. There used to be a murder case here. Oh, sh uh, he was he's a taxi driver, he was murdered, mm -hmm. and his body is dumped here. Thanks for telling me now. Okay, just enjoy your Virginia experience with us today. <laughs> Take care. Take care, Ross. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay. You need better friends, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not friends, not fun. Yeah, no. <laughs> Actually, I need better friends too. You guys are leaving as well? What if this camera falls down? How? Guys! Oh my goodness! Oh my god! <laughs> so that's it. Just me and Chris for the next hour. The rest of the guys might be monitoring us from 500 meters away, but it will still take about a minute for them to get to us. I heard that. What's that? That you? I'm feeling a draft for sure. Like a cool breeze behind. A cool breeze. <laughs> There's no wind. Yeah, I know. So it's a bit of a breeze. The leaf isn't moving. Are you giving us a sign right now? Can you feel a bit coolness? <laughs> okay, 30 minutes down. So far, so good. But just when I was starting to get kind of bored. Hadir! feeling something is coming to him maybe he's entering maybe the thing is getting very close to him maybe whatever happened don't run just stay put the crew will come in soon Rizan mm. I think like any time now is good guys please come in right now Listening to me. Guys! It's not responding to me. Bobal, bobal dengan aku. Tak boleh bobal. Kau orang tua. Kau orang tua. Si Isa, Paul, Bos Pili. Oh my goodness. As you can see, Chris isn't feeling like himself. He's been supposedly possessed by the spirit of an old woman. Okay. 
kita semua Ya, faham Tak, tak, nanti kita lepaskan Okey, balik ni, ni balik Eh When he got into that physical state of entities in this body, I actually felt really sad. Like, you know, whatever it is that's happening to this guy feels real because why the hell would you want to put your face on a muddy ground? Why anybody would want to fix that? So I was very happy to see it over. Is he okay now? Chris, are you okay? I told you really you need better friends. <laughs> So, did I uh, pass the test? Yes, uh, Ross, you did pass the test because you never run away. You, you guys actually it. enjoy this? Yeah, we enjoy our, this. But wherever it is, we won't force people to believe what we saw or what we hear. Everybody has their own, own belief. I'm still quite sceptical about it, like whether it's actually a ghost that went into his body because it feels a bit too convenient. I still don't know what it is, but it, it really shook me. But since I passed, I get to go on a proper ghost hunt expedition with the X-Trackers in a few days. Not sure how I feel about that. So this morning, the guy sent me footage from last night's Uginelli. Now, if you notice, this little device that we're using to connect with the entities is known as the ghost box. Now, this is through which the dead speak to us. It sweeps the AM-FM band like a radio, picking up mostly white noise, but occasionally you hear sounds like this. This is called electronic voice phenomenon, or EVP, and is supposed to be a spirit communicating with us. While we only had the ghost box with us last night, other ghost hunters roll with some serious gear like Kraton Paranormal Activity. They have the largest and most expensive collection of ghost hunting gear in Singapore. How expensive, you ask? It's about 18,000 more or less. $18,000! Yeah. Yeah. Kraton founders Anhak and his wife Nurul own all sorts of swanky gear, like this fancy camera. You know, just in case you need your spirits captured in high resolution. It's approximately around 4K. Wow. Of course, a ghost box. Which costs me around $500. Motion sensors that notify of any movements in the area. It's around 120. And whatever this is. I can't ignore this fantastical thing. This is, uh, they call it M-Pump. AMP pump. Yes. If there's the energy surrounding, the plasma will direct to it. So if, let's say, oh. the, the entity is here, so the plasma will move this yeah. direction. How much does this cost? This is... I like the deep breath. <laughs> She's just like... <laughs> deep breath. They're all 350. What made you guys, like, you know, decide to invest in, like, all these expensive equipment? We think that this gadget actually can help to show and to prove mm -hmm. that actually these entities are exist. Because your equipment is good, you're capturing clear image, so mm -hmm. it has to be an entity, yeah. Yeah. not so the fault yeah. of a video, right? Because sometimes we also need a double confirm. I saw something. Are you sure? Okay, let me check using a scientific gadget. At least we have uh, some data. Oh, maybe there is uh, entities mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. I know you're thinking what I'm thinking. This all looks very fancy, but do they actually work? So, time to run a test. We have uh, this doll called, we call her Selina. Of course you do. So, <laughs> of course you have a doll. <laughs> Enter Selina. She will apparently help us attract spirits for our experiment today. We'll be testing the infrared camera, the ghost box, as well as the K2 meter, which measures the strength of electromagnetic fields in this area. Just hanging out with a family doll. <laughs> so it's better switch off all the lights. Lah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like it's not creepy enough. Okay, sure, sure. I'll roll with it. I will put in the center of this, mm -hmm. this doll. I need to do some chanting a little bit. <laughs> and while we do chanting, so I will take out the light. <gasps> this is why they watch horror films. I can't look at it. I can't look at it. 
Okay, I see. As yep. you see, it's actually there's a PP, yep. and the temperature goes to the uh, positive. It means the energy is a little bit uh, high. Selina, Selina, are you here? If you are here, can you make some noise so that we know that you are here? I think the temperature goes to plus two already. Selina, are you here? If you are here, can you make some noise? More, oh my God. more, Selena, more, more, Selena, red colour. Selena is what's known as a possessed possession, an object to which entities attach themselves to. Anhuk tells me that sometimes Selena will move. But for today, a flickering K2 meter is all we're getting. I guess Selena didn't want to come out to play. Well, so far, Kraton Paranormal Activity and the X-Trackers are quite convinced about the things they've experienced. But what if there's a scientific explanation for all this? So I'm going to take you to meet a psychologist. Uh -huh. He's going to give his perspective on what your possessions might be. Keep an open mind. Yeah, sure. We'll see how it goes. Okay, okay let's go. We're meeting Dr. Paul Reddish, an expert on the psychology of religious belief and collective rituals. Maybe he can explain what happened to Chris. This entity has been disturbing me and they attracted to me lah, since I was two years old. Then as time goes by, I've been possessed and possessed and possessed. And what happens to you uh, when you get possessed? Like, are you aware of what's going on? I'm half awake. Some of the possession part, I can't remember. I really blank. Like the little rituals you perform? Uh, no. Actually, there is. The bowl. This is ritualised behaviour, sort of very repetitive things. Sometimes it's to lower the amount of sensory stimulation to get people kind of an extreme altered state of consciousness in which their mind um, operates quite differently. Maybe what's happening is in certain areas of his brain start to shut down. I think there may be some kind of mental health issue, uh, such as uh, dissociative personality disorder is one that, that, that comes to mind. So the act of doing something repetitive, like hitting the balls, may induce a kind of mental state in Chris where he starts to behave differently. How could you explain then, like, the ghost box? Would that hold any weight? To put it bluntly, they don't use scientific methodology. So these uh, AIM receivers, they're mainly just noise. Sometimes we over-detect patterns, particularly patterns that are important to us. And why do you think people get drawn to seeking out ghosts and entities? Well, one uh, psychology theory that may be uh, particularly pertinent here is uh, what's called terror management theory. Terror management. Terror as in, ah! Okay. <laughs> um, which relates to death. Us as humans, we know we're going to die, and this causes a very kind of deep unconscious terror. Uh, and there are various different ways that, that people cope with this. And one of these ways is through um, literal afterlife beliefs. I'm also thinking that these ghost hunts may be uh, fun, enjoyable, exciting. To him. Um, <laughs> this all makes sense to me, but Chris is unconvinced. What do you think of that session with Dr. Paul? Has mm. it changed your mind? No, I think whatever he has said about me didn't affect me that much. Ah. So mm. I keep, will stay with my belief. Because I, I'm the one who experienced it. So you're still like very firm, like you believe it's yeah. possessions and all that, right? <laughs> Finally, it is the day of my first official expedition with the X-Trackers. And we're looking for paranormal places to test out a new taboo. Wow, this is really nice. In the past, there is a case of two soldiers from Middlesex drowned down here. Oh. And then in 1948 also, there's a Chinese boy who drowned also down here. To look for haunted hotspots to investigate, the X-Trackers research each location through historical archives and hearsay from the ghost hunting community. This looks like a Chinese tomb. It's like all Chinese words. Well, actually, this is the guy who worked for CBC. His name is Komoto Ikasa. There's a saying that this used to be his house. That's why he wanted to be buried down here. So after sussing out various spots, we have decided on a corner of this park for our ghost hunt. Okay, so what's the plan tonight? Yeah, so today, uh, we are trying out uh, a new taboo. Ah, uh, yes. Remember the taboos? Superstitions that supposedly attract spirits? So what is this 
okay, this is a mortar where we use to mm -hmm. grind or tumbuk the mm -hmm. chili spices, spices mm -hmm. peppers. Okay, this is the called the anak lekong, the pecah mortar. So the one which is like a bowl, mm -hmm. the one is called the mother. They say if you separate them, the child will always cry for the mother. What? I have one at home. Okay, so the idea is, if you separate the mortar and the pestle, this disturbs the spirits. And the two unfortunate souls putting this to the test are Hafiz and Sharil, two of the group's newer members. The smell is not good. The smell. Come here, girl. The young bau, the bau kata. The bau bau. Dia 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 ada tak something macam bila orang meninggal yang bau pacai pacai. The rest of us are monitoring the duo via a live stream. Crying though. Yeah, no to cry. Couldn't be a cat or anything. No. So many sounds here, I don't know what to believe. Yeah. I wonder if something supernatural is happening, or as Dr. Paul said, this is a case of auto suggestion. Whatever it is, it certainly had an effect on Sharil. He started to feel uneasy and wanted to leave. When Sharil came to join us, we discovered some mysterious red marks on his body. Oh my goodness. Meanwhile, I kind of forgot about poor Hafiz. Each of us, we are doing this because they want to over fear. To, so he chose to, to stay overcome. up there alone? Yeah, he wants to overcome his fear. Why do you guys put yourself out there like this? We want to tell people the truth. Mm -hmm. That's the just. It's not because of popularity. It's mm -hmm. not. We want to gain viewers. We really do research in mm -hmm. paranormal and to see whether in the urban legend is true or not. And as if to prove the point. My back. Getting to start feeling pain. Okay. Don't know. Suddenly my back start to feel painful. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are coming in. Huh? Why? What happened? Suddenly I feel like sharp pain at my back. Is it because you've been sitting for too long? No, all this one is okay. Okay. <laughs> you feel much better? Yeah. And once you put down the the token, you actually feel much better? Yeah. Okay, I'm glad everyone is safe. <laughs> let's clear up. Okay, let's clear up. Alright, thank you guys. Are you going to stay here longer? Perhaps. Oh my god. <laughs> Dedication, huh? Yes. As for me, I am done for the night. One thing's for sure though, I'm going to be looking at my tumbok in a totally different light. I definitely won't be singing it in lullabies because I still want to use it to like, make spices. They said they could hear laughing and, you know, hear movements and footsteps, but I was observing the camera and I couldn't see any of such things, so... The only thing that freaked me out though is how they kind of like almost demonize an ordinary kitchen tool. That part freaked me out because it's so ridiculous that there must be some truth to it. I don't know. One week later, I meet up with the X Trackers again to watch the YouTube video that they have compiled about our hunts together. Are you feeling them coming into you? Whatever happened, don't run. Guys! Look at my face! You're laughing at my face, right? <laughs> so, what do you guys think? I think this is a very unique uh, episode for us. Well, in my opinion, I, I, we pick up quite a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think uh, the table works. So, for me, I find that there's a lot of side effects, but I don't actually see the ghosts. I'm still not quite convinced lah. So I'm really curious, why do you guys 
keep doing this every week. For me, it's like having to hang out with a, a like-minded uh, group of uh, people. Oh my god, I cannot. When I look back at the video, I can see they are like my brothers. They really take care of me. They literally are your lifesaver. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if they need me, okay, I'm here all yours. Yeah. <laughs> As an honorary member of the X Trackers, hanging out with them on both expeditions was really fun. I mean, they're like hilarious people. And every time there was like a sound in the ghost box, they get like super like excited, like, oh my God, there's a new discovery. So I really think in, in them, there's this very strong sense of like, still discovering and wanting to find out. It's very clear, their camaraderie. It's really brotherhood, isn't it? See, I was okay, I was okay until I heard something, now like, well, no. then I got freaked out. You want to do it again? No, you should do I, it again. I don't want to ruin my love for nature. <laughs>